So I've been reading this paper from mid-2015 in Nature about how octopuses are apparently absolutely amazing. And I wanted to see how I could actually talk about this because there's a lot of really cool information that I wanted to share with you. And what better way to talk about how intelligent and human-like octopuses are than to use this incredible game called Octodad. Today we're going to talk about octopuses and something that we've learned very recently about them. And we're going to use this game where an octopus pretends to be a family man in disguise. Welcome to What The Math. So it turns out octopuses, which is actually the correct way of saying plural octopus, not octopi, which apparently is incorrect, are actually a lot cooler than we thought. There was a new study in Nature in 2015 that made a mind-blowing discovery. They, and by they I mean octopuses, have some of the, if not the most complex DNA of all living creatures. Even though their DNA is technically a little bit smaller than human DNA, they produce 33,000 proteins, which is almost double of what humans produce. In other words, they are ridiculously complex creatures. But let's actually not rush into this just yet and talk about what they actually are and why it is so fascinating. So first of all, octopuses are cephalophodes. Cephalophode means head foot. They basically have a head and a foot and it's kind of all together. They're also part of the mollusk family, which is a family that consists of octopuses, cuttlefish and squid. But interestingly, their whole species, their whole family is really, really old. As a matter of fact, uh, we've found... uh, remains of creatures that were like 500 million years old. In other words, their ancestry is ridiculously old even before the plants moved to land. They're obviously older than dinosaurs too. But we don't really care about the cuttlefish and the squid right now. We actually want to talk about only octopuses. Um, Now, we know that they obviously can do different things like changing colors and so on. And all of this is essentially strategies for defending themselves against various predators. They have various sort of skills and various tricks on how uh, to protect themselves from different creatures and uh, one of those tricks is obviously expulsion of ink and octopus ink is made up of something that we have in our skin as well this is what you get when you start tanning Um, it's called melanin and this melanin is not only very dark and uh, basically protects octopus from being found but it also apparently blocks olfactory receptors and so animals like sharks that actually use smell to find food uh, may actually not be able to smell octopus anymore if melanin gets into their nose. Octopuses also use camouflage of all sorts. They can obviously change colors, they can change the shape and texture of their skin and look like absolutely anything. And on top of that, they have something called daematic display, which is usually a kind of a display where a creature tries to scare away another creature by making or doing something really scary. So in case of octopuses, they have learned to either mimic other creatures, like they can actually turn into dangerous animal-looking creatures, they can turn into poisonous fish, they can turn into snakes, or they can uh, suddenly change colors, become super bright red with like dangerous looking spots on their skin. And this is usually to tell everyone, I'm scary, don't come to me, go away. Another protection that they've actually acquired is being able to jet quickly through water using a kind of a really powerful muscle inside and they can essentially swim away and sprint away from uh, different animals pretty quick. I remember scuba diving once and I was trying to catch an octopus, it won, it totally won, it was way faster than me. But their coolest ability is obviously their ability to hide. They've learned to hide in pretty much anything. They can actually use tools to try to hide. They can create different hiding spots. Many octopuses, for some reason, actually found out that you can use coconuts to basically hide inside of them. And uh, any other objects that they find, they use them for hiding spots. But uh, obviously there's a lot of other really cool facts about them, like for example, uh, they have surprisingly short life. Despite being so smart, despite being so intelligent, one of the reasons I think they haven't taken over the Earth yet is because uh, they don't live very long. As a matter of fact, the longest living octopus is the giant Pacific octopus that lives about 5 years. So if you want one as a pet, they're not going to be around for very long. Smaller octopuses even live something like several months, so that's actually kind of sad. But one of the reasons why they live so little is because of mating and procreation. As soon as uh, two octopuses mate, they only live for a few months and that's it. Their their life is over. And uh, which is actually very interesting because 
Octopuses are ridiculously smart. They have a really, really cool behavior. Um, they have uh, what seems to be very complex behavior that usually is learned and taught by, for example, parents. So in mammals, usually you can learn all of these behaviors, but from your parents. But octopuses don't really have any parents because by the time they hatch, their parents are gone. So where, where exactly do they actually learn all of this? How do they learn to be so smart, to be so creative, and to actually have all of these really complex behaviors? And this is where what's known as genetic memory actually comes in as a possible answer. But we'll talk about this in a second. Let's actually talk of, about a few more really cool facts about them. Um, they're actually so smart that um, just like so many intelligent animals, they seem to be enjoy playing. They actually like to play with objects and specifically one octopus was actually observed kind of throwing a bottle around and then catching it and throwing it again and it was just doing it for fun. But most of their intelligence is usually related to getting food or to basically trying to survive. They've actually been known to board fishing boats and then opening enclosures with crabs inside because crabs are basically their favorite snack and uh, some other octopuses have actually been known to escape from one aquarium to get into another aquarium that actually had crabs in them just so they can actually eat them. And personally, what I've seen is uh, I've seen an octopus at a Korean fish market about a few years ago that actually made a grand escape by opening its enclosure and then scooching over the floor super, super fast into a nearby ocean and just escaping. And the lady who was selling it was obviously very upset. And due to their intelligence, uh, octopuses in some countries are actually on the list of experimental animals uh, that cannot have surgery without anesthesia. Basically, they are protected animals that usually only extends to um, animals like mammals, but in many different countries they are actually under the Animals Protection Act, which is actually very unusual. And they obviously have some really unusual things about their morphology, about their appearance as well. Uh, so, for example, uh, many octopuses can actually lose an arm or lose one of their, their um, tentacles and still survive, still live without them. And sometimes they'll even shed a tentacle just for survival purposes because that particular tentacle can then prevent an animal from eating them. They also are very varied in size. Um, the, uh, the small One of the smallest octopuses is, is uh, known as blue ring octopus, uh, and it's actually only a few inches long, but surprisingly, it's also the only octopus that is deadly to humans. And I'll tell you about this uh, in a second. I'll explain it to you why. Uh, and the longest living octopus is the giant Pacific octopus that's found on the west coast in the north, uh, usually near Vancouver, near Washington state. And these can uh, usually grow to about 5 meters in diameter, but the biggest ever caught was 9 meters in diameter, or that's about 19 feet, and it was about 270 kilograms, or something like uh, over 500 pounds in weight. They also have three hearts and their blood is blue because of something called hemocyanin. This is a protein very similar to hemoglobin, but it's a type of a protein that actually works in cold water a lot better than hemoglobin, which is why they actually live in uh, any kind of water. They can be found as far um, south and as far north as Arctic and Antarctic, and they can also be found in warm oceans as well. And the only hard part uh, of an octopus is actually its beak. Uh, all octopuses and all squids and all cuttlefish have uh, a beak that's very similar to a parrot's beak. And only one group of octopuses is actually known to also have an internal shell. But most of them don't have any other uh, hard structure because it's easier for them to squeeze into things uh, without any kind of hard objects. And actually, octopus can squeeze into the tiniest of holes. As a matter of fact, the only thing that stops octopuses from squeezing into anything uh, is their eyes. Their eyes are very, very complex. They're essentially like cameras, and they're obviously hard, and they don't really bend, and they don't fold. And so octopus can squeeze into anything as long as its, uh, its eye can actually squeeze in there as well. And on top of all of this, octopuses are also venomous. They're essentially kind of like snakes, I guess, or spiders. Um, so they, they can bite and inside their bite there is poison. Uh, but only one group, the blue ring octopus that I previously mentioned, is deadly enough to kill a human. And they actually have killed humans. Mostly scuba divers that got a little bit too curious and decided to play with this really, really cute little octopus. 
So if you ever see an octopus that has blue rings and it's very small and it's very cute, do not touch it because if it bites you, you're a gunner. You only have two minutes before you die. But now we come to the actual study that I've read uh, in the paper from last year. And the study talks about how um, of all of the creatures of the sea, of all the invertebrates, they seem to be ridiculously smart for unknown reasons. And on top of that, their DNA is ridiculously complex and uh, they even called it almost alien-like. Now, this is actually uh, probably not a right word to use because it it's not really from the extraterrestrial alien. It's just very unusual for a creature of such type to have such complex DNA. Octopus actually seems to be a, a very different animal from anything else that we've found so far, even other mollusks, which is why it feels alien-like. It actually, it was actually described as an alien by many different zoologists as well. And interestingly, uh, one of uh, the reasons why it's kind of alien is because it has some of the genes and some of the proteins that do not seem to appear anywhere else in nature. Now, for one, they actually have a huge amount of what's known as a jumping gene. These are known as transposones, and it's a type of a DNA sequence that can essentially change its position within a genetic code and sometimes creates new uh, mutations and sometimes reverses mutations and essentially it alters the cell's uh, genome size. And for some reason, octopuses have way, way more than anyone else. And because of all of this, uh, octopuses' genome looks completely different from other invertebrates, basically as if it was actually mixed and shuffled. On top of that, um, studying the tissue of octopus, we've discovered that basically there are hundreds of octopus-specific genes found in no other animals. Many of them actually are active in the brain, many of them are active in the skin of octopus, and many of them are present in the suckers of octopus, which are also very, very complex organs. And one of the most remarkable gene groups that these animals have is something called protocoderins. Uh, these usually regulate development of neurons, and octopus has 168 of these genes, which is a ridiculous number compared to even mammals. That's essentially double of what mammals have, and may actually explain why this animal's brain is unusually large, and also why this animal has so many different unusual um, organs in its body. And also, octopus suckers have a huge amount of genes that express different neurotransmitters, meaning that each of the little suckers on each of the tentacles can actually uh, do different things. Like, for example, they can actually taste things in a similar way that our tongue can, and they can possibly even detect something else using them. But what's even more interesting and more unusual is that many of the genes that we usually find in mammals, specifically uh, advanced mammals like dogs, cats, and even humans, seem to be also present in octopuses, but nothing else. Nothing else in the sea has those uh, genes. This is actually very un unexpected and very, very unusual because usually you would expect certain genes to be passed down generations, but we know for a fact, or I guess uh, evolutionary, that octopuses never really lived on land. They never really made it to the vertebrate world. So where are those genes from? And this is actually possibly explained by something called convergent evolution, basically the development of similar genes using completely different methods, but because they have so many of them in common with, uh, with us essentially, we don't really know, we don't really understand how and why it could have happened. Because essentially, octopuses of all creatures seem to have evolved uh, a lot of the similar genes that mammals have, and it just doesn't really make sense. And just to summarize all of this, well, essentially, octopus is a ridiculously complex animal. More complex than we imagined, more complex than even mammals. It produces way more proteins than mammals do, it has ridiculously complex uh, neurons and ridiculously complex brains, and if it actually lived longer than five years, for all we know, it actually may have been more triumphant evolutionary and possibly even take our place in this world. They have a lot of genetic memory that passes down generations. They're, they can learn really, really fast. They can solve puzzles. They can essentially even play and enjoy life, which is why I think it's kind of important for us to essentially preserve the oceans and obviously ocean life because the mysteries of life and the way for us to understand them lies right there. Obviously, we want to explore the stars and the universe, but you know what? We also need to learn more about ourselves and I think creatures like octopuses can actually teach us so much more about life than anything else. 
So I personally think Octopus is a fascinating creature, it can definitely help us answer many questions in the future, but obviously not if we pollute our oceans to the point where nothing can survive in them. So next time you decide to throw away that plastic bag instead of recycling it, maybe think about the octopus and how it could actually teach us about life, universe and everything else. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned about octopus and its amazing life. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else, science, math or space related and possibly play a video game. Game you later, see you later, bye bye.